Hi folks, uh, computer was a few seconds late that time, it's bogged down on me, I apologize. I like to do it on time every night so that way people can um, feel that it's, they can go away, do other things and come back and I'll actually show up when I'm supposed to show up, unlike last night where I was raging and I apologize for that. Sometimes I can't help myself. It was worse, it was better than what I had been like just before I went on there, because I was, I was pretty upset that they were doing that, and they continued to stream after. I forgot to put the link down till late, um, and I couldn't download that thing. It was a good thing I had the old cam working and was able to screen capture some of it. And then I made a video last night because I couldn't sleep, thinking about how the Nuclear Commission in Canada didn't. You know, if I was to stand up in front of the Nuclear Commission last night, for instance, and I said uh, the radiation is going to make everybody glow in the dark, right? Uh, they would have called me out right away. It's going to make it glow in the dark tomorrow. They would have called me out and said, hey, that's not true. You know it. Take the mic away from that man. And, and uh, rightly so, appropriately. But yet uh, they allow their insiders to sit there and claim that the background rations, uh, radiations of bananas and vegetables, food, that's indigenous to the planet, is the equivalent of the isotopes that will kill you from Fukushima or all the other nuclear facilities and that we're worried about, that we're concerned about, and that's why they're having that meeting, that regulatory meeting about, and that's why they have been formed, because those particular isotopes they're supposed to be talking about are so deadly and so toxic to the human, uh, every species on this planet, to the entire ecosystem. And they marginalized it, again, like to do every other one, and uh, that has to stop, you know? The media, when it says a banana back as a banana background radiation, has to stop doing that. They don't want to, but they have to stop doing that. We have to make them stop doing that immediately. If we were to start doing peer review academic studies right now, it's going to take a couple of years before they get published and are finished in order to come up with the solutions. If we could deal with it, if we knew how to deal with it, if we admitted that dumping it in the ocean, if, uh, just my stream jumped and it's back. Cause my, my screen will come up and go back down to a red screen and then it'll grab the signal again. So I don't know if anybody lost it that time, but. I'll just finish up and come over and say hi, is that we can have nuclear power, see? We really could. And it could be very useful. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> but having a scenario where they use the terrorist laws to stop anybody from being inquisitive and then also to single them out of the herd because they were looking at it, searching terms for typing that stuff in, and then they have inappropriate laws created by lobbyists that gets them to focus in on people like me and you and anybody else who types in uh, these to the search engine trying to understand what's going on. And as you start to find out that banana's got nothing to do with it, but yet you hear that in the mainstream from all the pundits and from all the experts, or potatoes, or water background radiation, or rocks as background radiation, <laughs> Excuse me, and uh, you hear so much of that, and boy and boy, you're going to snap, because when you come to the realization, because nuclear, the nuclear topic itself is so over the top, it's just so many angles, and so many different variations, and so many family, what, what they named it as a family tree, which is, that's how they indoctrinate people, because you hear it's family tree, and, and subconsciously your body accepts that, into you because there was the word family attached to it and that means you got to show a bit of respect now and you got to pay attention and you got to kind of accept them even though their family might be a bit strange and where you find yourself into those positions but you will drop your demeanor because of the words families that they're talking about right that changes the tone is what I'm saying and that has to go away too because that's the wrong names to call uranium killers daughters you know, repeatedly the students are having that shoved down their throats as they're 
I'm getting the big red and colder. Showing five, fifth, six old minutes here. I'm back showing back on the stream now. Did we lose the stream that time, folks? Because I got kicked off and I got a big bandwidth, a huge bandwidth. I'm using a little tiny bandwidth, 360 in order so this can't happen I have a huge bandwidth and you have to knock off my entire neighborhood to get me off anyway because I have such a big bandwidth and because I've been doing this for many years uh, it's interesting that's all hi Janet hi Sylvia hi Elizabeth James Mr. 8428. Why don't you shut up for a while? I read some of your comments. The fuck is your problem anyway? Do you think anybody here is going to believe your nonsense? 420? That's a pretty disgusting thing to do. You try to use the terminology of the 420, then with a G, the G20, part of the G20 area. They're paying you to go murder people by lying and trying to uh, misrepresent what people are saying. So you're a murderer by putting that, those, some of those comments you're putting there. Where you're saying that nuclear power is safe because your dad or somebody else worked for him. And they, they do all their inspections. You're a PR firm, man. That's what you are. Every one of them are leaking. All of them are broken. All of them got poor, redundant designs. All of them are underfunded. All of them create the yellow cake, the 238, that you sprayed 5.5 uh, million bullets a month of that stuff. You dig up mountains to get at it so you can get 0.02% of that mountain to use for a weaponized thing to solve a mathematical equation. That's all you're doing. That's what you're making those isotopes for. You're not trying about power. If you're trying to make power, you wouldn't be using all these isotopes, Eddie. You're murdering people constantly, every day, that die of that ionized radiation cancers, and then you try to treat them. You get all the university says, hey, we got all this stuff, find ways to use it. Come up with ways we can insert that into the industry, and the governments will just sweep it in there and make them use it. And so you destroyed our planet with radiation, the entire Pacific Ocean. Is dead in two years, Eddie. And you're putting crap in here about how safe it is. How safe it is. There's a million people ran up on the roofs at Chernobyl. A million for 15 seconds. And they can never go near radiation for the rest of their life. And they got big cancers and they're destroyed. Their families were destroyed. People are destroyed every day by the nuclear industry itself. You're, you're in the wrong hole, man. Go to the bootlickers you got out there and put your comments over there, but don't put it here. I seen some of your comments earlier. Hang on. Took a screen capture just before it came online. You too. <coughs> Day four and five are the main days of airborne radioactivity, Mr. Eddie G420. Like you're murdering people, man. Do you tell your parents what you do? That you go out and you lie? That you say, oh, it's like bananas or it's like water background radiation. Do you? That's what you're doing there. Day four and six, every time they got an earthquake, all the rods are falling down into that bells of hell, Eddie. There's your day four and six, it's airborne, and it never stopped. The Canadian government, I got the studies underneath it. The entire coastline, the entire coastline of British Columbia and America, Alaska, the Pacific Rim, every day is getting these nucleoids because it's up into the stratosphere, it's up into the atmosphere. It's nonstop hemorrhaging out. It leaves no oxygen left. You're going to have the dead Pacific Ocean in two years. 
and you got typhoons down there now where you just wiped out 7,000 islands in the Philippines because of all those isotopes and all that radiation they're picking up, those trillions of disintegrations, have created super storms. It was an F4 tornado with a 100 mile wide eye. When are you going to give it up? When is your check going to be just not enough? When, when is your kind of conscience going to take over, Eddie? Really? How many people do you want to murder before you finally say, well, you know, made some payments on the boat, made some payments on the car, murdered a bunch of people, but it's okay because someone paid me a check. So it's okay for me to go out and lie, manipulate, deceive. You're a sick and demented person, man. You're obviously a psychopath. And my page is not updating. You're a sick person, Eddie. You're out there murdering people nonstop. I got no comments showing up in my section. Don't even know if I'm live anymore. Hang on. I'm going to check on this computer. No comments. No updates. So I want to leave a comment. Tell me if I'm live or not. The radiation is coming up to Japan for almost a thousand days straight and going airborne. We're talking about at least in each place because it's putting out, depending on what it is, gammas and betas, alphas, emitters, rays. And that when they sprayed all that salt water on it, it created this concoction with the sulfur. And so the sulfur allowed it to be in what's known as a buckyball. And it sits in the center of that and becomes this little own nuclear engine. These things should never be on the planet, ever. But we've got to deal with it now. Yeah, seems like I'm live. Okay, good stuff, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we got all kinds of comments just showing up. Boom, boom, boom. Just like an engine. And so all these particles that are floating around in the environment, what they've actually been doing for the last 50 years, because they've been leaching this into the ocean, there's 5.5 million bullets a month. Every month was in Iraq. They were firing. At least half, if not all of them, came out of McAllister's and the three other depleted uranium-only specialist manufacturing facilities. And so there's at least 20 train car loads every day coming out of McAllister's. And each one of these are dirty bombs. They're dirty bombs. Every single one of them are supposed to be locked up in a sarcophagus that we haven't invented yet that can hold them for millions and billions of years. And Eddie Boy, here, he's here to murder people. He's here because he's getting a job to be here and be a spammer, to be a murderer. He's not going to go tell his families that he's a murderer. He's not going to admit to himself that he's a murderer because that's what he does. That's his whole purpose in life, whether he realizes it or not. Eddie is a murderer. He's a PR uh, bootlick and cheerleading lapdog. A fluff. He used to be a fluffer for the porn shows before he got this gig. And his job is to go out and murder people. And that's all he does. And he's really good at it. He has no conscience. He's probably just copying and pasting. And his boss is at his house banging his old lady where he's sitting in this little cubicle getting a decent little wage and getting some get his suit every day and he talks big everywhere he goes pretends he's part of the system and he's important but all he really does is he goes and lies on these forms and he tries to murder people by putting out this you know Eddie go watch my last video and see what you're what you're doing to children over there and what where does all the waste go Eddie where does all the waste go? It goes into bullets. And you go into other people's countries and you fire these dirty bombs all over the country. Like they're done in Iraq. Every month. 5.5 million rounds a month. Every month. Year after year. I've covered it extensively before I start this gig. Do you understand it? If you fired every... If you fired 5.5 million bullets a month in, say, New York City, 
Every month, month after month. Do you think you kill any um, civilians, Eddie? Do you? Do you think uh, you'll get them anyway because it's all depleted uranium? And so that whole country needs to be dug up because the safe nuclear industry has destroyed another country, destroyed another civilization, another people, all the animals, all the biodiversity, all the water, the saddest part on top of everything else is you make sure you get all the water. So even stuff they grow, you poison them no matter how they try to live because they, ha they can't live without water. And so you ultimately get them anyway, you murder them. And no one gets a chance to fix it because people like Eddie are out there lying. Just constantly lying. It's safe. It's fine. Just copy and paste because that's what his boss told him. And then he's allowed to listen to this, probably. He just copy and paste, copy and paste. And these murderers are everywhere. And I'll get over to that some other time. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Janet. Hi, Missing Sky. Hi, Jester. Make us looking. I don't give a fuck, Eddie. Good for you. Hang on. I'll give you a hand. I've seen your other spam, by the way, so don't. You knew this night was coming, didn't you? Hi, Liberian Rail. Hi, Sylvia. I just passing through. Elizabeth again. Jester, make it as looking. Uh, one World Life. Elizabeth, Mr. Ricky Sticky, hey. The Architect 87, hi. Yeah, there was a zinc fire, two zinc fires in the Unifor. Let me get rid of this one because it's not working anyway. There were two zinc fires in Unifor. And uh, the pools are missing. They went dry. Hang on a second. And you'll see the... Um, Wait for the computer to catch up. <coughs> Below you see the fire fire release uh, for Japan's Fukushima stuff. But you see uh, Hattrick Penry link below, and you'll see Miss Milky. She also covers his stuff, and she's done that recently. And he's talking about building four and all the the actual admitted that it's gone dry and that they had fires and meltdowns. Uh, in the pool, because that can happen. See, once you get rid of that hard water out of the pools, because the the earthquake picked these things up and snapped their backs. That's why the pools went dry. Because that's what earthquakes do, and that was a big one. As you well know, obviously, right? It devastated it, and that's where they got lost in translation. It was. Uh, not digressing, but every you know, because you had all these thousands of people getting killed in, by just an event like the toilet wave, and then that earthquake itself, where it shook everything for two minutes, was devastating. But that that tsunami really, you know, um, and so that really people kind of missed it. Missed how important it was because of the tsunami itself, see? And at the same time, the, the Freedom of Information Act, you got a record of all of what was going on. So even though you missed it originally through all the signs that were there, you can find those headlines if you look up on E&E &E News. You'll find it. If you go back in the dates, it won't take you long. And, uh, I mean, there's all kinds of evidence anyway. But when you look at a picture, do, any, do you need any evidence? That's all I'm saying, right? And yes, the evidence is there, it's important, everybody needs to flush that out, and they need to make a record of how they're doing that, so that they can find their way back, and identify it, and describe it. And that's happening more and more all the time, and I have that link below my video all the time now, just to, to give people, make sure people understand 
that if you want to go down that road, it's a long road. Your open PDF files, three, four, five hundred pages, well worth the read. Uh, very, very cool stuff, and I'm grabbing, gathering all the time, and I'm tracking my, I'm throwing bed breadcrumbs behind me the whole way, so I can find my way back. And so I'm going to come out eventually with something really nice about that, and include everything that I do anyway, because I don't, I don't have to prove nothing to nobody. That's why I do what I do every night. I don't have to prove anything I say. I don't to anybody, because. That's why I'm saying it. I have already proved it beyond any shadows of a doubt. And so to me, it's not up for debate. That's why I do the, do the things the way I do them, because they're not up for debate. And that's what it was all about. It was about giving you something that's vetted and something. And so a lot of times I'm going to be repeating the same thing over and over and over until I gather up more stuff or if it's pertinent to what we're talking about. we got to keep going over that, because that particular stuff, you can take it to the bank, Right. That's why it's so important. That's why it might get a little bit numbing because I go over the same stuff so much. But you got to give everybody that's coming in to get them on that live, invigorate them, and make them knowledgeable so that they can use that themselves. So they got something solid to work with. And Building 4 is definitely one of them, right? You know, pictures tell you a whole different story from what they try to tell you. They can't get in there for a couple of hundred years. And... Of course, the reason is the core is missing. It's gone down there and it's blowing all this heat up there and there's all these toxins that are continuing to go up into the environment and coming across the ocean. It have been every day. And the PR firms are very subtle how they come out and try to obfuscate this kind of stuff and where they pretend, you know, they pretend this and how do they pretend they're going to be offended by you saying this or saying that. But I come out and I hit them because I've already ran into them over and over and over and I went and worked over their site. I went and worked over all their feeds. And I'm not going to tell you much more, but I go through them extensively. And then if they keep showing up, uh, I'm looking for their friends and stuff like that. You know, there's a lot of stuff I'm not going to tell you, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking at these people and I'm keeping a record of them. I'm taking screen captures of what they're saying and I'm organizing it and boy and boy, then they're ready to hang as far as I'm concerned and I deep six them. And that's just a little bring in some more, right? they got to come in with new accounts now, and then you can go trace back to their histories with their accounts that way. And you can find the rest of the Mary crew sometimes. And that's so important, too, because you learn a lot by what they're up to and how they're all. You find out they're all out there thumbsing up certain videos and how they're all out there thumbing down certain videos, and you find out how they're all out there recording, coordinating each other. When you go, you know, when you spend a bit of time going, and I've been at this for uh, since uh, YouTube's been around, <coughs> and I've had some big PR firms come after me over the years. <coughs> I pissed off every country on the planet, period, bar nobody, and certainly Canada has never gotten away from it. And that's a story I'll go down one night for everybody of the things I were up to before Google was able to implement uh, their spam filters and stuff like that. I took over Japan, I took over China, I took over uh, Ireland, I took over Australia, I took over New Zealand for almost two years straight, uh, YouTube's all the top rated, most uh, commented. Uh, I understood how to push things out there, but then the spam filters come by. So after a while, I just gave it all up. But for a number of years, I dominated it. All their sections out there, their music, their sports, their news, their most favorite, long time, uh, all times, uh, every month, all the top rating positions, because I understood how YouTube worked. And so I've been shoving depleted uranium down everybody's throat for a good seven years. Actually, I, you know, I don't imagine anybody was the biggest spammer as what I was, but I remember, um, and Roger will tell you, that I was putting out at one point or 1,500 videos a day about depleted uranium, and I would take over countries every section of it. I'm sure they hated me because they told me, but I would drive it out there and they couldn't escape it, the real good stuff. And I would go so far as make 5,000 files, think about that one. And each one of them were individuals, so they couldn't, you know how they can block a certain uh, uh, video and then it would counter block all the other videos? I was way ahead of the day. I kept them busy for years about depleted uranium. You know, it's no secret out in the community of Hawaii that I was one of the worst spammers that YouTube will ever fucking hear of. I'm, I'm pretty sure no one could touch me. 
Roger will tell you that someday. We'll do the story for you. <laughs> so I took over every country out to Japan. China kept kicking me out of their country, but I would find other ways to get in there through um, just different techniques, just by changing the size of the frames, just by changing the size of the audio, I was able to defeat their anti-spam software. And those days are long gone, it'll never happen again. I understood that. And I said, this is one chance to get out there and stomp them right into the dirt. Because back in them days, I spent all day listening to uh, Harvard and Yale and Berkeley and MIT and Stanford and Oxford uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Even when I was outdoors, uh, it was out of my original songs. And I'll go back to the video here in a second because I realized I went way down the road. But that's nothing. You have no idea what I was like. You have no idea what I was like for trying to take over a country's uh, social networking site and how successful I was at that, where they couldn't get away from me. So I had every intelligent agency on the planet coming after me constantly. Britain, I destroyed Britain for almost uh, three years. I dominated right up until Google got rid of all the favorites, top rated, all the most responded. I dominated every one of them. You have no idea what it was like. Because I was determined to win, and I, like I am today, it's no different than me. I'll do it again if I got to. I would take videos of um, superstars, catch them when he broke, and then flip them and put the audios of <laughs> depleted uranium and stuff underneath it. Pop them out there, get three or four hundred thousand, and then close those accounts and just let them fly away. I would hit all the artists, would hit all the movie stars, and I would take their videos and I would uh, do stuff like that with it. So, just to end that part of it was that that's something about me that I'm not going to change anytime soon. I can assure you, you have no idea how much energy or dedication that I'm willing to go to or how much time and energy and effort I have actually done. Uh, it's definitely in the hundreds of thousands of videos that I've posted about depleted uranium over the years through, uh, through accounts meant to take over countries and sections and to force that issue out there. You used to be able to post videos under videos, right? Remember that? And they had to get rid of it because those videos all got posted under people's videos. There was no good just posting it up there, not doing nothing with it. Go out and find everybody was posting because that's the way uh, YouTube used to work. And so everybody, uh, I don't know how long I'd done that. That was like a four-year non-stop dedicated. I had friends would help me too just for a laugh, because I had everything set up to do it automatically. I just had to keep feeding it once in a while. Needed computers to crunch everything and then transfer it. That was a bit the hard work. That wasn't hard, though, because you can do everything automatic. So when it comes to uranium, when it comes to, act, you know, trying to, trying to push something, I, I doubt, I've never seen anybody else out there do what I've done like that, take it over, 1,500 videos a day sustained day after day, week after week, month after month. And I can go off for four or five hours and the computers would just keep rolling away. So uh, now here I am. Nothing's really changed in the sense of that I learn about things. It's just there's such, such, this is so important, this part of Fukushima, because it's, it, in, it covers everything on this planet. And that if we don't get some kind of direction started, we don't force the issue, nobody else is going to. You know, that I know for sure. That I know for sure. And that if, if people are going to use bananas and rocks and PR firms, you know, and water as background radiation and bring that into the equation of E equals MC squared, uh, you know, I got no problems denouncing these people and rejecting, rejecting them and collecting them into what I think are, is war crimes now, as war crimes that they're doing against us. This is a war crime against your entire planet by not telling you. It's a war crime against this entire planet by not even trying to warn you by, not, by, by using bananas. As an example, the people that are doing that, they're not stupid. They have a huge education extraordinarily educated people. And they know that a banana, background radiation, which is indigenous to Earth, and has evolved through millions and billions of years, rather, 
because everything on the earth had to be acclimated to the indigenous radiation, which is insignificant because we're acclimated to it. And so each one of these, each one of these forms uh, and the pundits in the media and the experts that are talking about it always use these as examples are betraying humanity itself and all life on earth, every animal, animal every creature. The entire, entire biosphere on this planet is betrayed by these people by using them as examples because people can't get away from that. Everywhere they go, they get that. And it, so that reinforces it. And you know and I know that that kind of radiation, you know, like, I uh, can't remember who put the comment there, but when bananas give you cancer and kills you, come back and talk to me, right? Because bananas won't give you cancer and they can't kill you. But a single isotope of uranium and strontium, plutonium, and uh, receivers, you know, three receivers will kill you in two weeks' time. You're going to die in two weeks' time. Just three receivers. Dose. Well, three receivers' dose of bananas is not going to kill you. You can't get it up to that high anyway because it doesn't exist in the indigenous world. You had to weaponize it through the nuclear process disguised as power, which is a byproduct of trying to keep the reactors cool. So they sell it to you that way. They, they're stabbing you every day uh, now with the language. Every time someone says a banana and uses that in the equation of M equals MC squared, they're essentially stabbing you and your loved ones and all life on the planet till the end of time. And to me, that's a moral... That's something I can't walk away from. That's something I can't turn my back on. Because I get, I get that. I've been at this a long time, and I actually get that. And I've seen so much uh, uh, evidence endlessly now of how it affects children and how that destroys the family because they have to put all their resources trying to take care of their blood, and they will. And then what happens to that child when they die? Right? That child gets abused, gets locked up in home and used for a cash cow by the government and is abused till the end of time and won't, won't never know, uh, will never have the opportunity that the, their loved ones were given them to exist, which is such a precious thing. And these PR firms that are out there murdering people, they don't think about those children down the road, see? They don't think about who's going to take care of those children. All they think about is they got enough money to buy a house or a fancy car or some gold jewelry where they got to rub shoulders with some good-looking uh, people that they work with that were in expensive clothing because murderers got to look good or they'll feel bad about themselves. So they got to give them lots of money. And then they got to make them feel good about what they're doing, that it's important. So they believe the lies too. And they, they won't come and watch stuff like this. And so it's up to us now to, over the next short while, not a long while, but the next short while, we have to produce a concept of how we're going to get the right thing to happen, which is all the universities on this planet got to look at this big meteoroid coming at us that's called Fukushima, and we have to deal with that. Because that's what we would do. If there was a big meteorite going to come and hit our planet, all the universities on the planet would go to work if they had to, to deal with it. Say the, the military says they can't deal with it, blah, blah, blah. Well, all the universities on the planet would go to work to try to stop that meteorite from annihilating this planet. And that's what Fukushima is going to do, just like it done to... Just by weather that you're creating, by releasing... Because the Pacific Ocean is like a big battery. Excuse me. And it took out the Philippines, 7,000 islands. People down there still haven't seen any help. People down there still don't have fresh water. People down there are now living in martial law. People down there don't know where their loved ones are. People down there had their loved ones torn out of their arms. People down there know they can't live there anymore. They know they've never seen nothing like this before. They know there's no geological records of 100-mile-wide F4 tornadoes on planet Earth. This is not a fairy tale again. This is deadly. 
And as the ocean heats up even more, which is the global warming from the radioisotopes that they're talking about, but that's what it's disguised as. They're blaming it on your tin cans, your pop bottles. And at the same time, Sellafield has got 8 million liters a day coming into that ocean. Every day for decades. Gallows left. That's pouring out into the ocean. That's running all around Britain for many years. See? And that's why you see that police state completely out of control then because it's been going on for so long and they're expecting people might wake up and rebel. Might get it. But you can never get it when every, you know, every useful idiot out there is saying bananas as background radiation or potatoes or waters or rock and putting that into that equation. That muddles the water where people can never wrap their mind around the actual implications of the numbers and the statistics that actually exist. And so we don't have time to play games anymore. We don't have any time to play these games anymore. And we might have to have nuclear power, but at least have all the technology available to deal with it this time. Because the technology they created was how can they use it and assimilate it into everyday life. That's the technology we see out there. That shouldn't be in anybody's life on any day for any reason. They use radiation like um, for cancers, but it kills all your other cells in your body too. And if one cancer cell survives, that whole thing has to start over again, see? When, like the, the link I got below for the DCA, that reduces all tumors uh, by 70% in three weeks. Right away, that's survival. Right away, that's no nausea. That's not, you're not, you don't have to kill all the cells. You rejuvenate all your cells. You allow the body to do it naturally, and that's peer-reviewed many times, and that link below is a recent update about the DCA. But there's no money in cures, and it has no patents. And the cancer industry... It is like the nuclear industry. They live. They can't exist without each other. And this is not like it's going to go away. And so we have to assert ourselves from here on out, like we have been doing. We have to... Because we have no choices. The Philippines never had that chance. We do. That 7,000... Islands, imagine if that got hit by another one. It'll take the topsoil out this time, and everything that's laying on the ground will turn into projectiles again. If you stuck your hand out a door down there during that 200 mile an hour wind, projectiles will stab you to pieces if it didn't rip your arm right off your shoulder in the first uh, two and a half seconds. There is no safe level of radiation, period. Of all the studies and all the lectures, all the scholars, that I have watched relentlessly for many, many years, that I have a massive collection of, I have never heard of a single one say that there was a safe dose of radiation, but I heard every one of them use bananas, and potatoes, and rocks, and background radiation to marginalize the actual true effects at some stage in the game, because they can't help it because they've been indoctrinated so well themselves. And it's just I'm focused on that now because that is, the, that is so much trouble for us. You get so many people saying that. All the media will repeat it. AP and writers will put it out, and then everybody will say the same sentence. And how do you conquer that? You destroy AP and writers? It's probably that easy, the reality of it. Because they're the ones that all the Fox and CNN and BBC all aggregate their news uh, tickers off of that with the bots, right? They're the big kahootas. And so if AP or writer puts it out, every other media on the planet, 96% of the media on the planet, automatically aggregate that onto their sites with bots. And then everybody's looking at the same picture and the same paragraph at the same time. Mind you, with... Uh, MSNBC and CNN, they lost half their viewers in the last year because they overdone it, because they re they're, they're so evil. But it, don't get your news from these people, any of them. You can't get your news from any of them. That's why I had to go down the scholar road, because at least dare, 
after I watched all the scholars on the one topic, I could have my own honest opinion based upon all the factual information I was able to get as a consensus from all the scholars on the one subject. And I had the time and the luxury of uh, doing stuff like that. And so that's why I see things the way I see them, is that there's an urgency for me now where I got no choice um, constantly every day in my life to be prepared for the future that is here. And we shouldn't have to do that. We shouldn't have to think that way. We shouldn't have to act that way. We shouldn't have to... We shouldn't. We, we have put people in the position to, you know, to warn us of this, to have a, a contingency plan to deal with this and that we pay all our taxes for it and they're going to use all of the stuff that they got for it for them and their loved ones and they're not, and they're not even going to tell us. But when those death plumes were coming through, they were telling their own loved ones that these death plumes were coming through, but they weren't telling the population. They weren't telling the children on their way to school, right? They weren't telling the people that were going to work or the people that were out mowing lawns or the people that were out by the hospital taking a break to stay inside for a couple of days because there was a spike of radiation this week and next week and the week after. And that if you went out and you were breathing the air because it was a snowstorm of invisible toxic uh, radiation, that it only took one breath to ingest the carcinogens. That ultimately... Once again, you know, if you get into a position where you're going to get three receivers, you could end up dying in two weeks' time. There's at least a 50% chance you will be dead in two weeks' time anyway. But you won't feel it. You won't know it. You won't understand it. You won't be able to comprehend that that happened to you because your government never even said, by the way, right, don't quote the moral leader because it's going to be another day. And that happened so many days here in British Columbia. 40, 42 minutes, 42 minutes, I kind of went down the road, of why I am who I am, why I do the things I do, is because I truly get it. And th the people out there that are supposed to be representing us uses bananas and rocks and background radiation indigenous to earth of water that are insignificant, that are completely insignificant, that are on... Uh, ne not only unnecessary, but have no place in that conversation. They got nothing to do with E equals M C square. Never said put a banana in there, put a rock in there too. We need that to make the atomic bomb. We need some background radiation of water to make the atomic nucleoid uh, do its million time expansion. We need it uh, the background radiation of the you know fruit flies ass. To make the nuclear bomb, you drop like it's like a voodoo where you got to drop a little bit of this in there and a little bit of that in there, and so they have done that so much to the population that everybody can't wrap their mind around it, and that we got to do this all the time till the end of time now, literally, in order to, to to bring the population to the point the damage is is done, but we still got to bring the population to the point where they got a chance to take care of themselves, where they got a chance to do something about their futures by looking at the jet streams and not, not staying underneath that. Avoiding where the jet streams are going to be the strongest is a start. Getting away from the Pacific coastline, the entire Pacific Rim, is a necessity. Changing your habits is vital to survival in the very, in the present and the near future is extra vital because you have to build up um, you have to build up reserves in your body because you've been eating GMO and that won't allow you to take up nutrients. That blocks you from take the, the formaldehydes, which are carcinogens, and the glossophates stop you from taking up nutrients. And so you've got to acclimate your brain because your brain is addicted. Addicted. That's what the junk food and GMO does. It's meant to addict you. It got all the nutrients engineered out of it, but it's meant to addict you. To always lug you back for just a little bit here and a little bit there. But that stops you from uptaking nutrients. That can actually and will change your DNA. And you'll pass that on to your children. And they'll end up with long-term uh, disabilities because of this stuff. And that we've seen it would stop you from breeding anyway in about three generations. You know, they've seen those experiments. 
and they, they fired that guy, but then he was a uh, hundred and something. Scientists came out from academic journals and said, you just can't take a peer review study and fire somebody to, because you don't like what he said, because he found out something about it. And so he was republished in one of the biggest ones in Britain, in the UK. I think it was the biggest ones. I can't remember his name. About the rat study, where the rats don't produce after three generations. But Fukushima, the, the, the low-level background radiation, look at the pictures of Fallujah, where 80% of the babies are born. So malformed. Um, it's just so heartbreaking. And, but we're going to see that in the entire Pacific Rim. If it doesn't get wiped out by the, tsunami, by the massive 200-mile, uh, 300- and 400-mile storms that are hundreds of miles wide, that'll go for thousands of miles. And that four tornado usually only went for about six kilometers, six miles. It was usually only a quarter mile wide. The Philippines was 100 miles wide. We went from a quarter mile to 100 mile wide in one jump. What's the next one going to be? 1,000 miles wide? We don't know. It's very real. They predict it. Hollywood has been blowing it out the door for the last two years straight because they know. And they put it in these poorly um, global warming movies, 500 mile an hour storms and super cyclones. That was an interesting one. That's exactly what happened to the Philippines, by the way. And, you know, all these trillions and trillions and trillions of plutonium isotopes and trillions and trillions and trillions of uh, uranium just out of that one spot. Not counting all the nuclear plants on the planet, not counting all the shells that they fired in Iraq every month. The 5.5 million round dirty bombs a month there, not counting Kosovo, not counting off Somalia. That's why there are pirates down there, because you dumped all your radiation down there. And that's why what Britain does, it don't even care. It's got 8 million liters a day going into the ocean. That's your global warming. That's why you see chemtrails. They got to create particles. That's the backup plan for every country out there for nuclear fallout, radiation fallout, which is ongoing constantly now, is to put out particulates that will aggregate with the radiation and drop it down. That's radioactive fallout. And they're supposed to keep you indoors when all this is going on. So every time you see chemical, um, you see these uh, chemtrails, that's exactly what they're for. People say, well, Dana... Chemtrails only been we've only documented since '96. Well, good for you. They've been around a long time before that. They they were using that that um, Chernobyl. They were going with helicopters, right? You can see it in the, the video below. Uh, Chernobyl 3828, where people only went out on the roof for 15 seconds and then went home. In Fukushima, they're going in there and they're never coming out. It's a nuclear waste site because that's where their body is only going to be acceptable to. It's, like, you got to realize this is all true, that this is the real deal, that there's no sugar coating necessary, and that only the facts will liberate you and set you free and allow you to move on with your life and accept that the world has changed, And but you have to fight back, you have to push back, you have to be vocal, you have to use your voice. That's the most frightening thing imaginable to these people is that you have a voice and you might use it. They've already mocked the proverbial bloggers and demonized them over the years to make sure they don't come out no more. And you can see barely barely any bloggers out there. When there used to be millions every day. It was a wonderful thing, but then everybody came out and attacked it. And they done that on purpose because they knew out of that millions and millions and millions, many could grow and become their own little force to deal with. And that as you became more knowledgeable to the open free access to information, that it wouldn't only take a decade or two before a large population would be educated, and that's what we see now, a very large population. And so they need to do things now to keep you in fear all the time, but not tell you about the real thing because they lose control, there is no order, because they're not gonna try, they don't care. They just don't care. They're going to blame it on your cell phones. They're going to blame it on the GMOs. They're going to blame it on the pharmaceutical industry, parts of it. Or they'll blame it on um, your bad diet, your bad choices, your poor skills. Why they 
slowly poison us to death through 65,000 unregulated chemicals and radiation hemorrhaging all over this planet to the point where future generations are going to have to go clean all that up regardless if they survive so we might as well go do it now and we can put aside all these wars and go to war against this hideous creature on our planet that is destroying us and I want you to remember that nuclear power might be our only alternative but we need, we need, you know, thousands of peer review studies every day coming up with ways to, to work with that before we can go ahead and do that. Because as it stands right now, we don't have that luxury anymore where most of this planet is going to be wiped out by severe storms and cancers and nuclear fallout, which is ongoing for over a thousand days. And not only that, because that's coming over the hot cores, the three melted cores, just unit one is three times Chernobyl, not counting the pools that are missing above it. The list is so freaking long. It's so brutal. It's so in your face. But it's got nothing to do with bananas. It's got nothing to do with rocks. It's got nothing to do with background radiation or water or background, background radiation when you're walking down the road. You're acclimated that, yes, you can get skin cancers, but we don't really know where that's coming from 100%. But yes, it could be the sun. But who cares? We're talking about isotopes that if you breathe it in, it'll kill you. The sun is something you'd learn through millions of years to evolve to. Same as all, you know, the, the rocks and all that. That is not harmful. You can sleep on those rocks, you're not going to get cancer. You can't sleep on these isotopes or these rods because you'll fall dead flat on your face about 100 feet before you get to it. And nobody can ever get your body back because that's how deadly they are. And they have been atomized, like a gram of it produces more radioactive nucleoids than all the grains of sands on the beaches on the entire planet. A gram of cesium, strontium, uranium, plutonium, hundreds of tons of it have been atomized. The zeros that fit on the end of the numbers are in, it's inconceivable that we have oxygen molecules left on the planet. There's so much of this. And we have to come up with a solution to survive in it, to try to save some species in the Pacific Ocean, to save communities from being obliterated, like the Philippines with 7,000 islands in their archipelago that now don't even have a tree hardly standing left on it, or a strip if it is. The only houses left standing don't have any walls in it, don't have any floors in it, don't have any windows in it, don't have any furniture in it. And it's surrounded by the stench of death and trauma. Those children are traumatized every time the wind whistles a little bit. And it will be till the day they die. They don't want to stay there no more. There is nowhere to stay. And they don't know where to go. And no one's trying to employ that they should go. Because when, what's going to happen when the next typhoon comes through? It could be... 250, 300 miles an hour when it hits shore, 400 miles an hour. And that could happen here, and that can happen everywhere else. I'm sorry. 54 minutes. I'll come say hi, goodbye to everybody. See, if those PR firms don't show up in the video, you won't get that stuff out of me. You're only good as your opponent. And so we like PR firms. They're okay. They're cool. As long as they don't show up anywhere else and just shows up here to warn me up, I can live with it. Hi, Albert. Just passing through. Sylvia Shawcross. I'm going to have to read all your comments after. Uh, Yesilays. Uh, James Parker. I pronounced that one wrong. Philip Lawson. Lavrinarel. Arlene. Make is looking. Philip Lawson. Ed Garrows. Wannabe24 Live. 2012 Reg Man. Moments nothing more. Thank you. Uh, let me come down and say hi to everybody. Chair, Hustle Bunny, uh, Janet. Hi, folks. I'm saying goodbye now. So, baby mamas, broken ass, Islander, reporting. You're stuck up there in the Charlottes. I mean, uh, hi, Aguay. I mean, Queen Charlottes. Beautiful. Stunning. Enjoy it while you can, my friend. Um, Miss Milky. I don't see you. I don't mean you're not there. 
You'll be there later. Hi, Miss Milky. I know you'll probably show up later. If you're busy, you're a very busy lady. So there's New Brew Magic is underneath the video. There's Susan's down there. Rad Chick, Christina Consolo. There's Thomas Ackerman. There's Andrew makes videos. There's documentaries below. Cancer Cures below. Uh, peer review academic studies. There's studies at the Canadian government nine days after Fukushima. Snowstorms, radiation, pull on the coastline. Um, there's comparisons like Chernobyl 3828 video below so you can actually understand what the radiation truly is like, even though it's slightly different because it's graphite and not rods. Um, and it was one of those, another one of those nights where you, my computer's freezing up on me. I guess I'm not going to get to say hi, goodbye to anybody. So I'll just wind it down. But ultimately, I'm not the guy I used to be where I can take over a social networking site. Those days are gone. And that's too bad because I would hesitate knowing what I know now, seeing what I see now, understanding what I understand now. I, I tend to see to gravitate towards lectures and I'm interested and how do we solve the issue outside of, you know, you you got to solve your own issue, is what I'm trying to say, really, first. But you still got to keep working on how do you, how do we do that? Who's going to take the reins? Who's going to step up with the millions of dollars and push a campaign out that the whole world has to deal with this meteorite and that we can do that and we can move on as a civilization and that the old structure is officially dead and the new structure doesn't include them. That they're unwanted and we shed them. In fact, we should consider war crime tribunals on a large scale right around the planet for all the, the PR firms and all the nuclear lobbyists out there. Uh, what they have done to us, what they have done to the ecosystem and the planet, is a legacy we got to take care of. We don't leave this one for the next generation. This is our legacy and we dealt with it and we gave the next generations hope because that's the best they can hope for. And we have to do that. That's our obligation. We're obligated. And it's the right and moral and ethical thing. And if we don't do that, uh, we serve no purpose, period. That's, that'll be our legacy. We, we served no purpose. And that is not going to be our legacy. Our legacy is that we got it. We woke up. And then we took control. We took charge. We hold them to account. And we don't back down. We don't give no quarters. And we're honest. And that way, everybody gets it. Because they don't look up, waste time looking up conjectures and lies. They use their time wisely to look up the facts as they are to confirm it, and then they understood it and learned some more, right? That's our legacy. We tried our best, and we've done something. Okay, we'll catch you folks tomorrow night. Sorry, I'll catch all the comments after. You can be sure.